This podcast is sponsored by Nobody. Hey dudes, this is Stacy Nelkin. I played Ellie in Halloween 3 season of The Witch. And you are listening to Tommy Throwback Kovac on Splat from the Past. He's fucking awesome. The keyword is fucking. All right, guys. Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past. The only 80s themed horror sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today, I will be welcoming back my good friend Stacy Nelkin for the third time. We are going to celebrate the 40th anniversary of Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. And it's always a fun chat with Stacy. She has no filter and she is friggin' hilarious. And uh, she was at Son of Monster Palooza recently. I want to get into that a little bit because I really, really wanted to go and meet her. But unfortunately, I couldn't make it due to a lot of bullshit that's going on in the life. But here we are, you know, and it's going to be a great conversation today. Uh, and I'll see, I want to see how far along her book is coming because uh, I've known about that for a couple of years. I'd like to see what the progress of it is. Halloween October is almost over, and I've got some real toe curlers coming up for all of you. Wait till you just see. It's going to be fantastic. And then November starts, trying to get the show fully booked for next week. We'll see if I can pull that off. But here we are, ne- never, n- nevertheless. So yeah, here is my new interview with Stacy Nelkin. Hey, Stacy, welcome back. Hey, how are you? I am doing good. How are you doing? Good, 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 thanks. Yeah, I'm hanging in there. It's been a bit challenging, but it's been a rewarding year. Uh, my mom had good. An, my mom had an incident recently, but she's hanging in there, and I... Okay. I got diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, but I've been kicking its ass ever since it happened. Um... It's, you you got diagnosed with yeah, that? Yes. Okay. Well, do you need to lose weight? It's usually yeah. associated with overweight. Yeah. Yeah. I've lo- I've Start lost- eating healthy and at diet and exercise, and you won't be having it anymore. Yeah. I've lost 30 pounds so far, and my AC levels went Good. from 7.8 to 5.4. So I'm, it's, I'm, wow. Yeah. Great. Good for you. I'm kicking its ass. Good. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so. Good, good. Can you believe it's been 40 years since Halloween 3, Season of the Witch? Uh, not, not even remotely. <laughs> can I believe that? Nope. <laughs> nope. Yeah. So from what I remember you telling me, you got cast and then filming started like three days later, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was very last minute. They were looking and looking for somebody to play the part of Ellie. And uh, they had mentioned it. It had been mentioned to me, I don't know, weeks and weeks and weeks before. And it didn't interest me until I actually read the script and relented because um, the makeup artist, um, Ron, Ron Walter, Mm-hmm. who was already hired, um, somebody I had worked with on a miniseries called The Last Convertible, um, and my then boyfriend, Perry King, was staying with Ron after he and his wife broke up. And so Ron, who had already been hired to work on Halloween 3, kept saying they're looking for this this actress. You know, it could be you. Why don't you audition? I'm like, ah, oh, no. I don't want to do a horror movie. And then finally, he talked me into it, and I read the script and loved the part, and that's how it happened. God, that was back back when there was this this organic domino effect in Hollywood, where like everybody knew each other and everybody would give each other work. Now nobody wants to help anybody, you know. Very very different time. Back in those days, people actually used to meet each other. Right. From what I understand now from my my friends who are still at it in in Hollywood, you know, it, casting directors don't get to meet actors, actors and actresses don't get to meet producers, casting people, directors, anybody. It's all you do it yourself with your own little video camera and submit it. It's it's really truly awful. It's uh, sad. 
yeah, it's really sad. And of course, you know, everyone would have meetings. They'd have them, you know, like it, like in, in someone's home in the hot tub or something <laughs> like that. Um, I never had one of those. Mm-hmm. I did have a meeting uh, at Warren Beatty's house, and he did show up in a bathrobe, which was kind of how I expected him to show up. <laughs> <laughs> he did get changed uh, a few minutes later, but he, he came to greet me at the door in a bathrobe. Um, but, uh, <laughs> and then we walked outside in his garden and that kind of thing. But other than that, never... Uh, not in anybody's hot tub or anybody's home. Oh, maybe one or two in, like, a casting director if she was married to the director or producer, their home. You know, things like that would happen, but... Yeah, I know an actress... Warren Beatty was an exception. Yeah, I know an actress. She went to uh, Warren Beatty's house, and she brought her agent with her, but she didn't get the part. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm not surprised. Right. Um, in the movie, you wear that fucking awesome Ramones t-shirt. Was that really yours? In, in, in Halloween 3? Yeah. I wore the Ramones t-shirt? Was it that movie or was it another one? No, that was from Get Crazy. Oh, okay. That was from Get Crazy because the director, uh, did Rock and Roll High School, Alan Arkish. Right. Also directed Rock and Roll High School, yeah. That's that's where I wore that awesome Ramones T-shirt. I was supposed to be uh, a groupie, a music yeah. groupie. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. I got my movies mixed up. Sorry about that. That's okay, but you got the right actress, so that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least yeah. it was still me. Yeah, I'm a huge Ramones fan. I almost saw them on their last tour when I was 13, but they didn't, mm. didn't get to. But I did meet Marky um, at Son of Monster Palooza a few years ago, and oh my God, his handler accidentally deleted a selfie I had just taken with another celebrity, and I didn't know it until I got back to the hotel, uh. and that person was only there that night. I was fucking mad. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't blame you. Bummer. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, is it true that Tom Atkins was sick with pneumonia while filming? No. Where did you hear that? That was a that was an IMDb thing. Of course, we know how inaccurate yeah. IMDb is. <laughs> not, not that I knew of. No, not at all. No. Yeah, you didn't see him. Maybe he was recouping from it before I got cast. That's possible. Um, but not not during the filming, not that I know of. Yeah, I know. IMDb is always giving these facts that are just, you know, incorrect, so... <laughs> mm-hmm. Don't believe anything you read on the Internet. I know, I know. <laughs> it's awful. I've, I've, I learn it every day. Um, do you have a favorite kill in the movie? A favorite kill? Yeah. Is that what you asked? Yes. Oh, God, I... I I really get traumatized by watching scary things. Mm -hmm. So um, it's so awful when the family goes in that room at uh, at the factory and, you know, the snakes at first and the mother and the the father. It's awful. That's, to me, maybe the most horrific scene. Yeah, I mean, Ellie gets decapitated with tire iron. What a way to go. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, what a way to go! <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm such a pussy that I would rather get tickled to death than than slaughtered. <laughs> <laughs> it's quick and painless. So I, have, I, 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 I don't know if this is accurate on the internet, but it said that um, your 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 kids did not see the movie. Is that true? Um, my youngest, who is now eighteen, mm-hmm. who just started her first semester in college um, actually saw it because she was trying to show off to her new friends that Mm -hmm. her mother was actually in this movie. So, um, and I guess they were, she likes horror movies, which is new to me, but, um, and so she actually saw it. Mm -hmm. What was her reaction? The other two kids have not seen it. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) did she like it? Um, I think she did. I think she did. Yeah. I thought it was cool. That was the word she used. Just cool. She probably thought her Not mom... Not much more. She probably thought her mom was badass. 
Uh, I don't know. She didn't uh, didn't say much. Just cool, mom. <laughs> <laughs> so this past weekend, you were at Soda Monster Palooza. Tell me about it. Was it fun? Oh, they're always fun. I love getting to meet the fans, mm -hmm. and uh, and I love it when. Uh, many of the fans are dressed up, and I guess because it was so close to Halloween, there were a lot of people mm -hmm. in costume, so it's as much fun people watching for me as it is, you know, for the fans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was very well attended. Wonderful, wonderful people. Mm -hmm. You guys did the panel and all of that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Tom's healthy. He's good. Tom is doing great, and Tommy Lee, mm -hmm. uh, who got married uh, over the summer, is remarried, uh, doing great, and uh, yeah, it's always great to see those two guys. I love them, and we've, you know, we've spent a lot more time doing these these kind of conventions together than we certainly did making the movie. You know, yeah. over the years, we get together couple of times a year so it's really nice yeah I'm so, I'm so sad I couldn't go this year uh, I haven't been in three mm. years now you know many people I know were there like you and Barbara Crampton and John Kassir and the, the girls from Twin Peaks uh, it would have been great to see everybody but it's just not mm. the, not the right time and stuff but yeah this, yeah this is the second year in a row that they've done the second one in October because it used to be in September Okay. And every time I would, every time me and my friend would drive out there, oh my God, it was blazing hot. Like, you know, late summer, early fall, blazing mm. hot. Oh, it was just awful. Yeah, California definitely can get that way. <laughs> yeah. Was it, was it your first California trip in a while? Um, in a couple of years, yeah. Certainly haven't been there since COVID and Maybe a year before that, so it's been maybe three years. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the weather was nice? Uh, the weather, was, actually it rained uh, Saturday morning. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think I brought some of the East Coast weather with me. It rained. First it was drizzling, and then it actually did kind of rain, which they needed. Um, but, yeah, it was lovely. I'm just not a California girl, never was one. So I was very happy to come back to the East Coast. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people from the East Coast, they just when they when they come out to California, they're just not used to that weather and it it, you know, it kind of makes them sick, I think. Mhm. Mm well, I miss the seasons. I love the seasons. I love the winter, I love the fall. I I like the marking of time, you know, how that goes. And when I lived in LA for 16 years i mean you you couldn't tell whether it was winter spring summer or fall i mean there was no real difference although in those days it did rain a lot more in you know the i guess it was the fall or winter but yeah it was just you know every day was sunny yeah <laughs> oh my god this uh, summer i was researching for an interview and i ran across this pilot you did in 1984 called tlc yeah, I went on YouTube and I watched it, and I did not know this existed. I, I was talking to Jonathan Schmock about it. Oh my God, what a mensch that guy is! What, was that a fun project to do? That was really fun. Uh, was it 1983 or later than that? It probably aired in 1984, 84? but but I'm sure 84? it was. 84. It was even that young. Yeah, I thought it was way after, but. Maybe not. Okay. Um, well, I got to work with Jessica Walters again. Mm -hmm. um, may she rest in peace. Jessica mm -hmm. and I worked together a few times, and we became very good friends. Um, I miss her. She was an extraordinary woman and an incredible actress. Um, and, yeah, Jim Vallely and Jonathan Schmuck, the... The, the funny boys, funny um, boys. it was it was silly and, and fun um tracy silver i'm trying to remember oh kathy silvers in it um but yeah it was it was fun and just didn't didn't get picked up yeah kathy silvers <laughs> kathy silver thank you good i do know tracy Better silver I <laughs> I, yeah i do know tracy silver though <laughs> hmm. 
Kathy Silver, you're right. Yep. Yeah, I thought it was a good premise for a show, but the the humor wasn't, you know, it wasn't punched up enough, I thought. Right. I Yeah, I agree. Was was Jessica agree. was Jessica Walter married to Ron Liebman at that point? Um Hmm. Good question. Uh I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, uh, cuz I don't I don't, I don't know. Good question. Yeah, because after that pilot aired, uh, uh, Jim and Jonathan um, got on that show Double Trouble with the Seagal twins, and it was from the same producers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and then they did, was Jonathan, I guess, wrote and I think produced some of the, um, uh, you know, the big show that Jessica wound up doing before she died. What was it called? Um, uh, Arrested Development. Arrested Development, that's it. Arrested Development, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Jonathan did wrote a lot of the episodes. I mean, I watched it during COVID. I never saw it when it was actually on. I went, oh my God, Jonathan. <laughs> yeah. And then it made sense that that's how he and Jessica met. So. Yeah, and of course everyone knows Jonathan as the snooty Major D in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. He was, right. He was so good. Right. He was so good in that. Yeah. <laughs> any any good stories about working with John Ritter on Sunset Limousine? Oh, you know, no good stories. He was lovely, though. Mm-hmm. No, I I didn't really have any good stories about him. I I remember Martin Short doing the most brilliant impersonations of Frank Sinatra <laughs> and all kinds of people. And Paul Reiser, um, who went to Stuyvesant High School mm-hmm. a few years before I did, where, you know, I also went singing the Stuyvesant alma mater to me, which I never even knew there was one. Yeah. Um, but no, John, uh, John Ritter, no. He was a really lovely guy, though. Really, really nice. Yeah, I, I've never heard anything bad about him. He was just, yeah. He was a class act, that guy. Yep, yep. Yeah, I used to see that movie. Yeah. I used to see that movie on cable all the time when I was a kid, and I would watch it because I had such a crush on Susan Day. She was hot. Oh yeah, from Partridge Family, of course. And L.A. Law, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh right, of course, yeah. The first time we talked, you know, you told me about how Yellowbeard was was your favorite movie making experience. I'm curious to know mm-hmm. what was it like working with James Mason. Oh God, um, he and I didn't have a lot to do together at all, mm-hmm. um, and and he was he was quite elderly at the time. But yeah. you know, I grew up watching you know, reruns of all those great old, you know, 40s and 50s and 60s movies. And, you know, he starred in Lolita, you know, with Sue Lyons. And, I mean, he was just incredible, just an incredible actor. And he was so, so handsome. He was still really good-looking. He must have been in the 70s when we did the movie. Um, But still very attractive, dashing man, but I didn't really get to work with him, you know, we didn't have scenes together, so. Yeah, um, Mel told me that they had dinner many nights, and that he was just so starstruck by him, like, he wanted to ask him so many questions mm-hmm. about his career, but he just couldn't bring himself to do so. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, he, I mean, he was a huge, huge star in, you know, in Hollywood in the 50s and 60s, Yeah. Oh, he's one of my favorites, and um, I just did a tribute to him uh, with his grandson, Duke Mason, um, who's in politics out in L.A., and oh my God, Stacy, he looks just like his grandfather and talks just like him. Really? Oh, I've got to look this guy up. Okay. Yeah, he actually has had a, um, a Zoom show for a while called Duke's Download, and yeah, he's on Zoom there, and God, he's such a handsome guy, very handsome. Yeah. Well, if he looks anything like his grandfather did, yeah. Yeah. And Very his, handsome. And his mother is Belinda Carlisle, so he has her nose, you know. Oh, <laughs> wow. Oh, and she's gorgeous. 
Yeah. She's yeah. beautiful. Wow. Yeah, he has good genes. <laughs> Who's the dad? Um, James Morgan Mason. Yeah. He, he, okay, he was a, I think I knew this right. Yeah, he was an agent. Okay, that it, makes sense. Yeah, he was a William Morris agent for a while, and before that, he had been mm. he had been uh, Reagan's aide in the White House. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's yeah. A lot, there's a lot of history there. Yeah. Also, in 1984, you were in The Jerk 2, and I, I love Mark Blankfield. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mark Blankfield, I think he's an underrated Blankfield. comic genius, but he's no Steve Martin. Um, how was he to work with? Oh, God, he was delightful. He was so sweet and so... Um, I didn't really know his background. I, I no. never saw stand-up or anything that he had done, but... The Fridays. You know, I know they put a lot into the into the um, pilot, and he was represented by um, people who I was represented by for five minutes, George Shapiro and... and um, uh, and and John and um, West uh, Howard West, who uh, you know George Shapiro was was Seinfeld. Mm-hmm. He discovered Jerry, you know, oh, and yeah. he he met, represented. Well, they were managers represented Jerry Seinfeld. So you know, if the, and they they produced. They were executive producers of the pilot, and you know, if they had that kind of faith in in Mark, you know, uh, obviously, you know. Mm-hmm. They they felt like it was going to go somewhere. It was um, slated to go on NBC, and we were on the list. And at the last minute, they pulled it out and they put on a show. Um, oh God, what was it called? Something not Bay City Blues, maybe Bay City Blues, something like that. Mm-hmm. Completely different type of show. But for a minute there, you know, we were going to have a we had the green light, so mm-hmm. um, which would have certainly changed my career around a lot. Um, but you know, yeah, and that's how luck works. <laughs> yeah, I've talked to a few people that were on Bay City Blues. Um, mm-hmm. My favorite George Shapiro story: Mark Maron is interviewing Carl Reiner, and Shapiro is there, and he falls asleep before the interview starts. And I think they had to use some special effects to like get rid of the snoring or something, you know. Later, uh, <laughs> uh, well, I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, I think George, George just passed. Yeah, he did. George Shapiro. Yeah, I only knew that from watching the Emmys and seeing the in, in memorandum. I called him at some point right was it before COVID or during COVID. Mm-hmm. I hadn't talked to him in years, and I just wanted to thank him and tell him, you know, what a great guy he was because we, we stayed in touch. And yeah. So sad. He but was... he had a good life, and, you know, he loved to laugh. Oh, boy, did he just love to laugh. He was yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was loved by a lot of people. Mm-hmm. How was working with uh, Michael? Yeah. Sh- how was working with Michael Schultz on uh, the Jerk too? Oh, he was great. He was so easygoing and he's a pioneer. Active man, and he was great. He's a pioneer. Yeah. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, I remember the the audition. The no, the it was the the reading for the network. So I had already auditioned once or twice, probably twice, and now was down to me and I think one other girl at the network reading. And I remember, you know, these things are always just, you know, you're they're just fraught with tension. Um, and I'm reading again with Mark, who was already cast, because as I said, George and Howard were executive producers and he was represented by them and um and and so we're on one side of the room and you know there's this crowd of i don't know probably mm, 12 people on the other side of this room and before we start reading 
Mark waving, and he had the cutest smile, yeah. waving to people and smiling, hi, hi. I said, do you have friends here? And everybody cracked up. I don't know what was so funny about it. I was shocked. You know, I, yeah. I didn't know, I think, at the time that he was, you know, with, you know, that George and Howard were his managers. So pro- he was probably waving at them and other people and... And I think that helped seal the deal for me, that just that kind of naivete that the character Marie had, you know? Yeah. (laughs) But, yeah, kind of a shame. But I've had a lot of those little, you know, things in my career that, you know, wasn't meant to be. Yeah. And that's how it goes. I I read recently that uh, Woody's retiring from making movies. What do you think about that? Oh, no, he's not. No, then the very next day, and I know he's not. Oh, he's he's not. in France right now making a film um, that's all in French. Um, and no, he has no, he has no intention of retiring. So you I don't thi- think he'll ever retire. I think he'll keep trying to make them. Uh, certainly Mia Farrow and Ronan Farrow did not help. Uh, they, 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 they put his career in in the grave Mm -hmm. uh so he's trying to resurrect it as best he can Uh, he didn't help himself by being with Sunyi, but that's a whole other deal but you know mia was out for vengeance and and ronan now as well and ronan's quite powerful in uh in the media and uh it's been very difficult he's been canceled as have several other people but for the wrong reasons you know Mm -hmm. um so very very sad he's a a comic genius and it makes me very angry um to see what what's been done and and same for other people i mean look at uh um oh god what's the name of the guy who was the senator uh uh, al franken i mean my god for po- pointing at a girl's boobs, I mean, like, what the hell? Yeah. It's, it's craziness, craziness. You it know, is. it's it's a very crazy time, and the cancel culture is uh, not helping, uh, he- not helping uh, any progressive movement at all, and the Me Too movement, yeah. all of that. It's um, it's gone way overboard. It has way, way, way overboard. It's, it's- gone way yeah. too far way too far yeah yep yep do you have any fa- do you have any favorites of Woody's movies oh you know sleeper was oh. kind of always my favorite yeah um i also love annie hall and yeah. um you know and obviously manhattan for other reasons but sleeper it just cracks me up it just so many moments in it, and the music is incredible, and he's adorable in it. And, Sleeper, um, Sleeper is a favorite. Yeah. I'm going to reach out to Claude Rains' uh, daughter um, next year for the 50th anniversary of that movie because she's in the party scene. Oh, okay, with the orb. Yeah. The orb, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> it was so funny. It was re- and those giant vegetables yeah. that they steal. I mean, it was just so silly and adorable and the big great. chicken <laughs> Keaton was great and yeah the he bi- was phenomenal his just his comedy the way he moved you know that 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 like buster keaton he was just great yeah the big chicken <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. right right there were some really truly laugh out loud funny moments in that yeah yeah, for for me, it's Sleeper, Stardust Memories, Zelig because I am a Zelig, and <laughs> a, a, Annie Hall is my favorite romantic comedy of all time. And I just interviewed uh, Wendy Gerard, who was in that. She was supposed to be Alvy's other lover until the script got changed, and so then she had two two scenes in the movie. She played tennis with them, and then she was the wife in the <laughs> cocaine scene. <laughs> In the cocaine scene when Woody sneezes. Oh, great with Jeff Goldblum and no, and uh, and and yeah. No, it was her and John Demanian right. in that scene. Jeff Goldblum was in the right. Uh, and John, the, when when in, Woody blo- 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 sneezes and the coke goes everywhere. <laughs> yeah, Goldblum was in the right. party scene when he said he forgot his mantra. Right, <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. And then they cut to them all snorting coke, and he sneezes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Yep. My, my dad went 25 years without seeing that movie, and that was literally the only scene he remembered. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, my dad did his share of blow in his day. <laughs> so I want to update you on my love life. Um, I have a crush on my neighbor, and I've been trying to make time to go ask her out, but every time I do, she's never home. Uh, since since Aww. since the pandemic has wind down a little bit, right? Uh, she's yeah. just she's just not never home, and uh, she was v- very nice to my mom during lockdown. Like uh, my mom would go, Aww. my mom would go over there and they would talk and have coffee or whatever, you know. And I was mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. she's she's cute. God, I I I, I want to go out with her, you know. But Maybe then you can write a note to her or something. And Maybe my mailbox and say thank you so much for. Being so, so kind to my mom. Um, by the way, if you ever want to get a coffee or yeah. watch a movie together, I'm a film buff, and I don't know. Yeah. Worth a try. Yeah, but, you know, the thing is, though, it's, it's going back to what we've been saying, you know, it's a different time now. I just, just, yeah. there's so much fear been evoked in people, you know, since, since post-9-11. Especially for men. I know. Yeah. My son is 21. And in college, and, you know, you can't say anything to a girl without being canceled or called a rapist. It's unbelievable. Yeah. You, can't put your, you can't put your hand on a girl's leg without being called a pervert or this. or Like, what, what happened to girls and guys getting together? Right. It, it doesn't happen as much anymore at all. It's really bad. Well, so you could preface it by saying, I hope you don't think this is inappropriate. Exactly. You know, yeah, yeah. everything's inappropriate to these young girls in their 20s, and it's just, uh, I don't know, we that need, doesn't we, bode well for the future of our planet, because if people don't procreate yeah. <laughs> <we're> <laughs> at some point, <laughs> but anyway, it's just, it's a sad, there's no, there's no flirtation going on, you know. Yeah, we need to bring... Over with. We need to bring back Sadie Hawkins Day. <laughs> yeah, right, right. There you go. Exactly. Girls ask exactly. the guys. Girls make the first move. Yeah, God. Right. Yeah. Well, it's kind of what they do now, too, yeah. I'm still friends with that girl in Texas that I told you about last time. And mm-hmm. Oh, good. Okay. We talk on good. Facebook, and we, we engage in a little bit of exhibitionism, and we have fun that way, you know. Um, Good. Yeah, I, she really does have a boyfriend and stuff, but when he's not around, we have some fun. <laughs> okay. Well, as long as you're having some fun, but maybe you want somebody for yourself, you know. Yeah, Be but better. I'll, hopefully, I'll, I'll get I'll get to ask out uh, my neighbor though. We'll see. Yeah, that would be great. Her car is parked next that to. Would be great. Her car is parked next to my mom's, so you know all I have to do is <laughs> all I have to do is see if she's home. You know. <laughs> yeah. Right there, you go. So, how's your book coming along? Oh, I'm not. I'm not writing a book. I'm working. Oh, I thought you were full time as a substance abuse counselor. So yeah. I have had not a second to do any writing. I think about it, but no, no actual writing happening. So yeah, because yeah. I remember the uh, last Not time yet. or so. Yeah, you were you were thinking about doing that, and I didn't know if you did or not. Yeah. Yeah, nope. my book. Um, Not yet. One of these years. <laughs> yeah, my book is taking on a life of its own. I'm in the middle of reconstructing it and um, rewriting it to, to make it better because I just keep remembering stories, you know, that I've forgotten right, all about. Right, Yeah. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm just co- I'm collecting all these stories, writing them, write, writing, uh, you know, the story down and then articulating right. it. Good. R- writing's a tedious process, Good. but it's rewarding. Yeah. Oh, excellent. How far into it are you? Um, I mean, okay, so for, for the rewrite, you know, I'm about to begin, but, uh, the, uh, the, the, when I was writing it, um, a year ago and stuff, I only stopped halfway, you know, because I just needed a break. But then once I listened to this audio book 
that was so damn mm-hmm. good. I was like, I need to rewrite the book like this because people will understand mm. a book like this. I don't think they'll understand the way that I've been writing it, you know? So, right, yeah. So I'm doing a, a draft kind of a thing, you know. So good. Go, g- going back to IMDb, it says that you just did a movie called Quakasaurus. Is that true? I, do, I have one little tiny thing in it, yeah. and I have a, a short film that's going to all kinds of film festivals called The Shed, a horror movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, and that that is it. And otherwise, I'm uh, just with my my family and here in the country and working, you know, forty hours a week, and that's it. Not just, but that's what's happening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Quakasaurus has uh, some names in it that I know. Um, Butch Patrick, I've interviewed him. Right. Mel Novak. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've interviewed him. Yeah. Oh, my friend Ronnie Angel, love that guy. Mm-hmm, great. Yeah, do, do, do you know the status of when that's going to get released? I know nothing about it. I, I did some little thing where I'm supposed to be on the phone and this was all during COVID. So mm-hmm. I, I, um, uh, I videoed or I had my daughter video me because yeah. <laughs> it was supposed to be like a phone interview thing anyway. So I know nothing about it. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll keep an eye out for that one. Um, I have a couple jokes for you. Go ahead. What, what do you call a boy that doesn't masturbate? What? A liar. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what did Great. the What did the blonde say after she gave a blowjob? What? Way to go, team! <laughs> did you make these up? I, I I I see them on the internet, or someone tells them to me ah, sometimes. Okay. You know. <laughs> Stacy, thank you so much for always coming on and being an awesome Great guest. Great talking to you, Tommy. Take good care, and take care of your health, and go get that next door neighbor. I sure will. You Stay have healthy. a happy Halloween <laughs> and the rest of the holidays. Happy Halloween. Bye bye. Bye bye. Well, there you have it, Stacy Nelkin. Ain't she a sweetheart? Oh, I just adore her. She's friggin' awesome, and I'm glad we got to talk again. Welp, until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, there's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Later, dudes!